So today we'll be learning about the panoramic x-ray. Does anyone have any experiences with it or have they ever had one taken on them? Mm -hmm. yeah. What did you have it taken for? The braces. The braces? Oh, Perfect. The, with some teeth. Perfect. Yeah. So with the braces yeah. we'll be looking for mixed dentition, oh. making sure the alignment's appropriate, the eruption patterns. Do you also have them for the wisdom teeth? For wisdom teeth. Any <laughs> other uses you can use the panoramic x-ray for? Exactly, in the jaw bone. You can see the extent of it, if there's any kind of stiffness yeah, or anything like that, as well as trauma. If anything happens to the patient, you know, God forbid, you never want that to happen. You can use it supplementally with the bite wings and the PAs. It can be a supplemental tool. Um, they're a little bit different than the intraoral photos that we've been taking. With the bite wings and the PAs, they're different because we don't place a receptor inside the mouth. You know, with the bite wings, the patient has to bite down. This is different. They do bite down in a stick, but there's no film in there. And the tooth head actually rotates around the patient. So it's very easy, it's very, very convenient for the patient that way they're not gagging. And they don't have to worry about Tora, they don't have to worry about different techniques. There's a few things that are important with the panoramic x ray. We have to look at different planes. The patient positioning has to be very, very, it's very important. There's a few planes, the mid sexual plane. Do you guys know about that at all? Do you know where it goes? Exactly. You want equal right and left halves. And then what about the Frankfurt plane? Anyone know about this one? That would like chin up, like that would be like tight. That was with head. the errors, exactly. If it's too far up or too far down, you want to make sure that it's just right in. It comes right from the middle of the ear canal, which should go right under the bottom of the eye. And you can align it perfectly on the pan. And then for this pan too, there's also a canine line. They can see no technical thing for it. But you can see just in different areas. You want it to kind of be centered right down the center of the canine along the eminence, right around the little cusp. And then there's also, also the focal trough, which the patient, when they bite down on a little bite block, this is the bite block. I won't take it out. But there's a little line on the top and then on the bottom. You can see it. Top and bottom. And they're going to bite in that perfectly. And that allows, there's a piece around the bite. That allows the parent x-ray to know where our patient is and to make sure that everything's centered and imaged appropriately. Because, you know, it's just a So, biggest thing too, for the advantages of it, much bigger. Minimal uh, exposure time as well, and it's easier for the patient. Some disadvantages though is that it's distorted. The image quality isn't very clear, so we can't assess caries cannot assess periodontal disease or periodontal abscesses because we cannot see the interproximal or the bone levels of the teeth clearly. So those are some things. It's also very expensive. It's a little pricey, but it's very nice. It's a very, it's an excellent, excellent machine. So when you bring your patient here, you'll need to have on a mask, you'll need to have on gloves and over gloves. Right? So I'm going to let you guys grab them right now. We can all go in there. Why do you have to wear all over gloves too? Because you have to protect the Right? So you put on a lead apron. So if you have dirty treatment gloves and you grab the lead apron, it's an infection Sorry. control issue, right? Here, and I'll filter in. We're all going to review a few things. Come on in. Oh, yeah. It's getting cozy. I'm actually going to stand there and you guys a little bit. I know. It's a small room, but at least there's only five. At least there's only five of us. So the lead aprons are right behind us. So you don't have to close all the way. But if you want to grab one, you can. Any differences that you guys can notice? It's no thyroid colic. Exactly. And why would there be no thyroid colic? It would distort the imagery. Thing. Exactly. It would create a very large little white loop at the bottom of the x-ray. So good infection control. We're going to touch the lead apron with our over gloves. Another big thing. I'll have you slide out of there if you want to come out of there. Let me you're not. <laughs> Tucked in the door. <laughs> so we've got, you know, Patterson will be up as well. And then you would also like Dexis to be up as well. And you'll have the appropriate mocks in there if you want you can see, I don't know. And the biggest thing too, you guys, this is the Twain screen, and this helps with uh, setting up the patient. The most important things, you want the number one arch to be highlighted and accessed, and then you also want the M. Okay, so Mr. Mousky told me this awesome little cheat, you want the golden arches for McDonald's, you know, they have those big golden arches. And you also want it to be cohesive with this um, little paddle right over here. You want the same thing to go there. And so when you guys actually expose the x-rays, this is great because it has a little video. There's a little film and you can click on it and it will actually walk you through the process if you forget anything. In the 
future. You know, when you're actually doing this, we're not going to expose them today because you don't need to. But another big thing, excuse me, I'm going to grab, this will be the patient bite lock. Okay, I'm going to open it with your over gloves. Sometimes it's the hardest thing. <laughs> you think. Wow. all together right in the center right there and another important thing is that it's a little barrier you're going to put for your patient right over can we get it in Struggling. Perfect. Beautiful, beautiful. So, who would like to be the patient first? Elaine, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Elaine, Candace, I am going to take a panoramic x ray on you because we're going to evaluate your wisdom teeth. Mm -hmm. All right. So, we mm -hmm. place it on. Double leg. Is she here? Beautiful. So, what would happen if Candace had a tongue ring? Take it out. Exactly. Oh, okay. Why would we need to take it out? Because it would show up. Exactly. It would cause a ghost image, and it would distort <laughs> the image. So, it would just be on diagnostics. We don't want to distort the image at all. What about earrings? Everything. Exactly. Everything that is no metal. metal. No metal whatsoever. Even if you have that little tiny, like, you know, frogish tissue. Yes. <laughs> nope. Take it out. Because then it's pointless. If you don't take it out, it will just come up with a big line and you can't read it. And then you expose your patient for an diagnostic, diagnostic film. Not beneficial. So, I'm going to have you step forward. You don't have to step in yet. Okay. Stand nice and tall. Oh, my glasses? Yes. Beautiful. So nice controls here on this specific x-ray machine. Oh. There's up and down. I'm just going to move it up. Right here? Right here? Right here? Oh, I think that's going to be okay. We're really taking it? Probably we take it out. Okay. All right, my dear, I'm going to have you step forward towards the machine. Yeah. And I am going to have you bite right on this block. <laughs> Top and bottom. Can you feel the two slots? Mm -hmm. And if you step forward a little bit, I'm going to actually move you up. How do you feel? Feels, feels good. Feels a little awkward, right? Mm -mm. No? Mm -mm. Okay, good. So, biggest thing, you want to make sure her spine is nice and straight, because if it's not straight, you're going to superimpose the position back there. And your hands are going to come right up here on this knee doll right here, so that way she's nice and secure. Did they roll the close? Yeah, right? Isn't that crazy? <laughs> and it's nice because we have this mirror, so we can check her planes and make sure. So her mid-satchel plane right down the center looks good. And then her Frankfurt plane. If the planes go away, we have this nice little button right here with the head, and you can just hit that bad boy, and it comes right, I know, a little freaky. <laughs> so we're gonna move the Frankfurt plane as appropriate. It looks pretty good. I do the center of the eye, or center of the ear canal, right below the eye. And now this, for the canine, we're going to have her awkwardly smile. Really, mm -hmm. really awkward. Mm -hmm. And there's numerous buttons that you can hit, either anterior or distal to the canine. Smile awkwardly really, really big. Looks <laughs> just about perfect. And you can just keep it or move it as necessary. So, the next thing that we do is we're going to have you stay nice and still. and mm -hmm. have you close your mouth around the piece and touch your tongue to the roof of your mouth. Guinness, okay, we're going to expose this x-ray. We'll be right back. We're all going to file out. Her mock is in. Everything's appropriate. I'm going to shut the door. Make sure she doesn't move. Expose. Open the door. Beautiful. Okay, you may come right out of there. Go ahead, you're good. Golden. Beautiful, beautiful. Does anyone have any questions? Any concerns about it? Any thoughts? 
I had one and it went away. <laughs> That's all right. If it goes back, we're still here. Perfect.